Live from Austin, Texas. Extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube. Covering Dell World 2015. Brought to you by Dell. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here for the wrap up of day one of theCUBE here at Dell World, hashtag Dell World. Go to crowdchat.net slash Dell World, join the conversation. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman, where we get to actually have a fun time breaking down what was an incredible day on theCUBE today, mainly because it's Dell World. On top of that, it's on top of the news of the EMC $67 billion acquisition, which is about to take about nine months to close and this slew of other conversations. We had Marius Haas on, and more importantly, we had the king himself, Michael Dell, the big man on campus here in Techland, $67 billion. Dave, Stu, welcome to our wrap up. Let's break it down. Let's first start with um, the number one question I, I get all the time. What do you think of this deal? Do you like this deal? Um, Dave, what do, you, what do you think? Would you like this deal? Uh, let's see, my answer is um, no, yes, and kind of. So um, from, from the standpoint of EMC, pure EMC perspective, I don't like the deal. I think EMC, great company, I'm from the East Coast, I'm sad that EMC is going the way of digital, Wang, Data General, Apollo. So emotionally. It's, emotionally, I don't like the deal. Okay, fine, I, I, I feel as though that, that a lot of the investments that EMC has made over the past you know, decade are, Or two, three. You know, the philanthropy, are, the presence in the community. Everything, I mean everything. It's, it's, it's eventually going to go away. Okay, it's going to be, cease to exist. So from that standpoint, I don't like the deal because I have an emotional tie to EMC. From Dell's standpoint, I think it's quite interesting. I think Dell has gone from you know, a, a player that was kind of struggling for relevance to <laughs> Dell is clearly now relevant. Uh, the third angle to me is customers. When I say kind of, it's good from the standpoint of consolidation, so, makes things. So no for EMC, yes yeah, for Dell, yeah, yes and for Dell because, customers. Yes for Dell because I think Dell's going to make some dough on the deal. I think they're going to do very well. They're immediately relevant and they'll, they'll, they'll get an ROI. I mean, today's VMware stock performance is not encouraging. We go back and talk about that, but now let's talk about for customers. Yes, it simplifies customers' lives from the standpoint of consolidation, single throat to choke. What I don't like about it from customers is, and we talked to Marius about this, if I were running the show, here's exactly what I would do. I would take VMAX, VNX, data domain, any other sort of flat to down product. I would elongate the product cycles, I would cut R&D, I would raise maintenance, and I would manage the decline you of the business. You would financially engineer it. I would financially engineer it. And that's exactly what they're going to do. If they tell you they're not going to do it, don't believe them, because that's what any, people with brains would do in this situation, and these guys are really smart. And that's what happens. So, from a customer standpoint, it's, to me it's mixed, and it, I think it remains to be seen, but I would say in general it's 50-50 um, for the customer. So, no from EMC's perspective, yes from Dell's perspective. I have a different take on eh, the customer for the customer. So John, Stu, go yeah, ahead, I so, so I mean, we spent, God, the last week and a half, we've been digging into this. I mean, Dave, you know, how many hours have we spent trying to understand that, that stupid tracking stock, and where it is, and, you know, the deal, I feel like we say, okay, I think we understand the deal. Oh wait, VirtuStream's going to spin out. Pray I don't alter the deal anymore. Oh wait, what's going to happen to Pivotal? What's going to happen to SecureWorks and RSA? Are they going to spin out? There's other groups inside this federation that come next summer may not be private. They might be spun, they might be sold off. Michael Dell was asked a number of times, what about the PC business? And Michael says, we are committed to the PC business. Metadata that we hear, Dave, is that of course they're committed to the PC business, but they're still shopping it. So could oh, yeah. something right. happen you know, in the next year to spin off that PC business? Uh, and I mean, that just changes the economics Dude, greatly. What so you... what we look at now, it's like, I almost feel like we, we, we're moving all the pieces on the chessboard and we're trying to understand this. There's so much financial engineering behind the scenes and there's so many pieces of what's going on and so much nuance that, you know, you talk about portfolio management and what products and what people, it's like the big things are still, you know, I, I think you know, uh, there's going to be another three shoes that'll drop before this so day. So just quick follow up on that. Three big shoes and a ton of little slippers. So, Absolutely. so just quick, quick follow up on that, then we'll get your, you, you have to weigh in. My, we asked Michael today in the Cube you know, about the Pivotal IPO and he said, yeah, I support that. I mean, that's what Joe has said, EMC has said that. Well, the way he delivered, the, the, way he delivered the answer, look at the video tape. Well, that's what Joe T said, of course I support that. It was like, yeah, no brainer, dude. It's like, 
politically answered perfectly. Yeah, it was the same answer Michael no, gave when I asked. said, hey, we'll see. You know, we'll see when it comes through. We're going to assess. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that no. was, that's what they communicated. Yeah, they, yeah. They're he, conveying. That I also asked the Pat out, Gelsinger uh, question. Kind of, well, you see his bio? Well, of course I talked to Pat Gelsinger. And then I'm like. Well, he said Pat came to the house for the weekend, and you know what that was about. It was like, Pat, we love you. You know, we want you to, you know, or Pat says, I want to get to know what, what's going on. Michael Dell said, I remember Pat when he was the technical assistant to Andy Grove. Very telling. How about Jeremy Burton in this whole deal? Let's, let, first of all, before we go there, what's your take on the deal? All right, well, here's my take on the deal. First of all, I have to eat my own words because I was at um, Amazon reInvent, where I was, was it Amazon reInvent? Yeah. I said, there's no way this deal's going to happen. Uh, you know, it's the worst deal could ever happen. I'm totally blown away. But apparently the game and shift on the, on the financial engineering side was at, in motion for over a year. Total blind side, I thought they were going to go with an Uber Federation model, whatever. I like the deal, I'll tell you why. I think that the cost of capital is going to be the ultimate driver of this deal, so I think VMware's side will be impacted. I love the Federation, I've always loved that and I always asked Joe Tucci. The problem with the Federation is VMware was screwing it up because VMware's ecosystem was being tainted while the pressure of their own business was under siege. So VMware is trying to get in the cloud business and so it was kind of like, the EMC had no real take over the world strategy. Products just weren't there, everything, the heart was in the right place, EMC was doing all the right things, but they were just a couple, you know, mulligans away, Dave, from really nailing it. So EMC was so close. I think Dell takes the best part of what EMC is, and I think EMC is the strongest it's ever been since I've ever known the company. In terms of overall health, in terms of personnel, the mojo, the brand marketing. So Michael just basically buys the best asset on the market, in my opinion, and just will change the game completely. I think it's going to be a Harvard you know, business review case study or some sort of... Uh, let's yeah. talk about so, that for so a second. Hold on a second. So, you know, uh, let's, let's, let's unpack that a bit. So the, 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 the best asset in the market, revenues are flat, cash flow's declining, and the Who's cash flow? EMC's. True. And, and, the, and the Federation really hasn't panned out because it hasn't had the but right Michael, leadership. But Michael, Michael so, said their strategy and they've been really on the right trend lines. They just, again, the products. So you hold on. look at their core business and they're emerging. So, so, so EMC's betting on a bunch of strategic initiatives. DSSD, uh, AirWatch, uh, what else is in there, Stu? Help me. NSX. 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 There's like six of them. And they're not going to throw off cash in 2016. They, they're supposed to go cash flow positive in, in 2017. DSSD is a great so, gem. We'll I see. Along. We'll see. I love DSSD. All right, question to I you love guys. all those, but, but, but I, I don't know, John. E EMC is a company in transition. There's an old saying on Wall Street, don't buy companies in transition. So Michael just bought a company in transition. Right. So well, let me, let me, let me finish, my, finish yeah. my analysis. We'll come back to the EMC question because I'm going to ask you both the next question. How much overlap does EMC have in their own product portfolio? By itself, Great it's, question, by yeah. its own question. But let's go back down to the benefits. I think it's the best time to be a CIO. If you look at the consolidation, Western Digital buying Hitachi, if you look at Oracle and the position that they're in, and what Dell's doing with the EMC merger, you're talking about an, an environment where there's only a few throats to choke, Dave. So like if you're a CIO and you want to have Agile, you got Cloud, you got a dozen different solutions, this could actually turn out to be a really good, you know, renaissance for building out next generation infrastructure. Could mean higher prices too. True, true, but at what cost? If, if, the, if the prices are higher, but the outcomes is the outcome is for building? And I think it's okay. I mean, I think, I think uh, if you're building skyscrapers, how high can the price of steel go? I, I think is there right. a monopoly? I no. I think you're right. Decelerating the pace of price decline is not necessarily such a bad thing, number one. And number two, I would say Dell's going to be more, more price, cost, price slash cost effective than EMC, so that's a good, a good thing. Well, with big data, customer. you can measure everything. So if I am in a build-out mode, if you believe IT is transforming and businesses will be building out, people need to be building, not consolidating. So the consolidating is happening, in my opinion, because the pressure to drive revenue at a business outcome level, mobile, whatever you want to call it, is so great. I think that's the opportunity. I think that's where the puck is going. I think that's where Dell's skating. Now the reality is, in a mismatch of vendors, Microsoft's just kind of plugging along. Hey, Hey, enterprise customers, here's some of our cloud. Yep, so, so I love the question that John asked yeah. about 
the overlap within yeah. EMC's product line, but go ahead. Yeah, so. but uh, the, the big news for me this morning was Microsoft. Yeah. I mean, Satya Nadella here talking about the deep partnership, and it's not, you know, Windows 10, super important, of course, on the PC side, and it's going to be a big transition for the servers, but it was about the hybrid cloud. And, you know, the question I asked Marius and Michael is, looks like you don't want to own the public cloud. And they said, nope, we're going to be a supplier, we have hyperscale, and Microsoft is buying Dell gear. Wow, what? It's, it's Dell servers in Azure, right. which I can tell you, a couple of years ago, Microsoft was aggressively moving over to the ODMs, and from what I hear, well, it just went poorly, which is an experience we saw. Lots of big companies, Dell's big financials. With the ODMs, we well, know that. So the, it's that battle against the white box. But, and well, Dave, Dave OEM just is over $8 in, billion in the networking Dell space business. and in the server space, I've seen a lot of examples where they, ta they try the Taiwanese companies and those companies just aren't set to be able to service what they need and they come back. In networking, that's where open networking is starting to gain a little bit of traction because I can get a cheaper switch, add my own networking and get HP right. or Dell to support but it and on servers, Dell does have an opportunity to be the you know, low margin, low cost player to problem. massive Here's volumes. And with, wait, wait. with, with Microsoft, Microsoft as a partner, the, the other, it, it's interesting to me, Dave, we, there was the news, you said it's not really news, but HP isn't going to do public cloud really. Whoa, whoa, before we get to yeah, that, yeah, I just want to close off of Microsoft. We're going to go that next. I just want to close off of Microsoft. What I like about the Microsoft Dell announcement is it strikes at the Achilles heel of Amazon, which is hybrid cloud. Amazon doesn't even use those two words, hybrid cloud. So that is the weakness of Amazon's story, and they're going hard after that, so I like that. You had a comment. Yeah, so here's my, Stu brings us the ODM point, and the issue is that Dell basically is an ODM now. Their OEM yeah. business is over $8 billion thrown off cash. They have a good commodity supply chain. Why not supply the cloud guys? HP saying, hey, I would, I'm going to back out of the public cloud. Dell has no public cloud. Basically the infrastructure as a service business has been yielded to Amazon and Azure. Right, so if you believe that, which you guys were talking about earlier, that means that everyone else has to add value on top of infrastructure. So am I a supplier to the cloud guys who are buying boatloads of hardware, right? Well, two years ago you know, at Dell so World, two years ago at yeah. Dell World, Michael Dell said, no, three years ago, we will compete with the ODMs, and looks yeah. like they are. And, and, Bye, and EMC and Dell have both sold lots of gear to service providers, and there, there's an opportunity All right, there let's talk too. about HP. Yeah. HP really announced today that it's, yes. it's there's no, there's no more public the, HP's breaking news, I, thought, I put that, on Twitter. That, that's breaking news? HP's been no, basically? No, no, there's actual hard news in this. By January 31st, 2016, HP is sunsetting their public cloud offering, doubling down on private and managed cloud but, but services. HP didn't even say the words HP public cloud no, and HP Discover. they did, Discover. they had a public cloud offering. They didn't offering. even mention the words in their keynotes, never came up. Well, that's because no one was using it. But then, but they actually have a public cloud offering. So, well, that was you know, news to me. I, th I so, thought the thing was still So born. Stu um, has been tweeting this earlier, brings up the trend. This comes back down to Brian Gracely's conversations we've had on theCUBE and some of Brian Gracely's research at Wikibon, which is the infrastructure, platform as a service, and SaaS markets are getting dominated. Infrastructure as a service is over. Stu, what do you think about that? I mean, basically, who's in the IIS business? Well, so, it was interesting. Michael Dell talks about how many applications there are out there, and they're not all going public cloud. There's a certain percentage Michael tends to say, oh, it's like going to be 10% are going to go public cloud. Wikibon's number are more like, within the next 10 years, it'll be more like a third of the market goes there between SaaS and infrastructure as a service uh, and platform as a service to go public cloud. But that still means there's at least two thirds of the market that's going to still stay on-prem. There's plenty of opportunity there, but it does feel like a shrinking market. Some people have said, you know, are Dell and EMC you know, fully aware and can they manage that shrinking market, because storage has been flat, you know, servers you know, are under pressure, PCs are under pressure, so their core businesses are all shrinking, and I haven't seen that many, you know, if they're not going to after the public cloud, they're not building out many of the applications. Uh, they have great positioning in kind of the converged, hyper-converged markets that I cover, but overall, so where Microsoft, are they going to grow? So basically what you're saying is Azure and AWS will actually de displace the on-premise infrastructure business. So, I, I mean, you think back, how many deals are people Do doing no? on, on the Microsoft Do you suite? you think that's true? Exchange and you know, SharePoint and all those, that was like the, the easy application that every infrastructure company sold, and Microsoft is disrupting that. You know, boatload by going Office 365. So AWS and, um, and Azure are cannibalizing the price point and hardware right. on-premise. 
Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. For every oh, dollar no, no, no. spent there, no, no, no. hold on, much? hold on. Speculation. Let's, 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 let's do some speculation. Friend. Let's do the thing about the chessboard. So, is Amazon and, or in this case, Microsoft, Satya Nadell on stage, luring the candy or the crack to the, you know, to the, the suppliers? Hey, I got a big box deal for you. Stay out of the cloud business. I mean, that's a plausible scenario. Well, no? Microsoft's a software company, and they'll do anything to drive down the cost of infrastructure. That's the way a software company behaves. But why not dangle the carrot and saying, I'll standardize right. on I think my... it's Machiavelli. Dave, Dave, I, at I the mean, same no. time, Microsoft's a hardware company now too, right? I saw a bunch of surfaces at this show. You know, they're making sure. their own boxes. But, but again, if Michael Dell can make money selling hardware to Microsoft, why not? Why not? True. He's, well, if the conditions are no cloud. I don't know. Dell has I no mean, cloud. Dell has no cloud. HP now is no public. Well, Dell is going to have Dave a cloud. Dave Donatelli no, at Dell Oracle is going to have VirtuStream, and Dell has like three or four clouds, right? They got VirtuStream, they got, they got vCloud Air, they got Cloud Foundry. Dude, what do you think yeah. VirtuStream? Clouds everywhere. Um, so VirtuStream is a good asset in certain workloads and, SAP. you know, absolutely, it, 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 it's SAP. Is it, is it Dell's cloud? No, it, it's not a massive public cloud. It's more like a managed hosted cloud is what it is and you know, kind of sits in the cloud. What about vCloud Air? Is that a massive public cloud? Is what? Is vCloud Air a massive public cloud? Yeah, I, I haven't heard much about vCloud Air lately. But, <laughs> well, it's uh, not a massive public cloud, <laughs> to the point, That's right? You're, you're, you're totally so right. So yeah. I've been on this high horse for a long time. To compete with Amazon, <laughs> Google, and Microsoft, you got to have one of two things. Either you have to have massive volume, so you can get the marginal economics of your, your deployment services down to close to zero, or, and or, you got to have value up the stack. The VMware's stuck in the middle, right? Oracle's got at least value okay. up the stack. SAP has value up the stack. ServiceNow, value up the stack. Question I asked Mark Lewis, former CTO of EMC, came on theCUBE. Um, I asked him, is this the end of the Federation? As we know it. Dave, Stu? I, I say no. I think. I think Michael loves the Federation. Why wouldn't, why wouldn't you maintain that Federation model? He's as much as said that. Michael tends to say things and then do them. And he said on the call with analysts the last Monday, you know, we maybe overdid it a little bit as far as trying to integrate too much. The companies like SecureWorks, we didn't you know, force that integration. We like that Federation model. Well, we, we heard Mary's Haas amligating everything into one so thing. So I think, you know, Michael as the godfather, the new godfather of the Federation actually makes some sense because he's got to de-lever. He's got to raise some cash so I can see him be ex officio so. of the Federation spinning off companies doing IPO. So who's Given the Mo Green in the scenario? So who's, who's the Mo Green in the scenario? <laughs> <laughs> he's the godfather reference. So that wow. scene. So. Who gets shot in the eye? Um, HP? Whose territory is Dell taking over? Guys, who's so, winning well, and who's losing? So, I mean, John, Dell's number one enemy for as long as I can remember has been HP. And from what I hear, one of the things that was interesting is, you know, you interviewed Marius Haas today. Where was Marius Haas two years ago when EMC and HP, you know, were talking about this? His whole crew is over here now at Dell. HP blinked and Dell made the move that HP wouldn't do. Yeah, we're and at Green is bold I, I, and Green it is, is NetApp. moving. NetApp is Mo Green. Right, nice. Why do you say that? Nice, Mo Green, nice little business, you know, innovative, started the casino business. Michael Corleone took him out, right? And so, this massive, how does NetApp stay independent yeah, so as a public company? Just how a, does that A happen? comment on the Federation, I think it's worked okay for EMC and how they have it. If the Federation turns into six companies that we're trying to coordinate, it's a nightmare. I mean, I, you know, I've heard some of the inner workings as to how the federation model, how it works and how it doesn't work. And the more pieces you have where there's not central management and you're kind of loosely coupled, that's tough to coordinate. I yeah, mean, if, if, you're, you're, if, if we were trained pulled together, you, you know, the train analogy is always the slowest train's the one hey, that keeps it, you from going. It works going. for Hitachi, works for GE. I mean, why can't it work for Dell? It's a huge risk. What Stu's saying is execution risk. There's a lot of execution risk, but you know, Gould and, you know, and these guys, we know them, we talk to them, I think financially engineered well, systems but it, like but, this can but, work. But wait a minute, it, in a way it minimizes uh, execution risk by diversifying your base and let, let the heads of the Federation fight it out. And whoever wins, you know, if, if the pivotal, you know, cloud or the software cloud can beat the IAS cloud, so be it. Yep. Let them fight it out. So, a little a concern I have, Dave, I like the idea that EMC gets to go private because they can go through some of these messy transitions fast, but you, when you talk about elongating product cycles and trying to milk 
uh, you know, gonna milk a cash cow. Don't you think that's going to happen? But Dave, in this marketplace, if you can't move fast and innovate and create new things, look at what Amazon's doing. You know, not every service that they create is a home run, but they're yeah, but creating what does it mean so to many fast? new ones. You can't. You, you have no. You can't. You have no choice but to milk the cash cow. You have to milk the cash cow because otherwise, you have. To, what are you going to do? Pour R and D money into a legacy product, or are you going to kill it and kill your revenue stream? Yeah. You're not going to do that. Yeah, it, you it's have to milk the cash. It's cow. interesting. I, I walk through the show floor. There's an Amazon booth there. Nobody's at it. Nobody's going to the Amazon booth here because that's not the audience that's here. As opposed to at AWS. I mean, of course, everybody cared about AWS, but the ecosystem that was there. How about a VMware? And it was going. Were the people at the Amazon booth at VMworld? Um, I don't know that I got a chance to, ch to check it. At, right, at Oracle Open World, you know, there's an Amazon booth and there's not a lot of people there. It's, Amazon's kind of that little separate. You know, when I talk, we talked to uh, uh, the, the reseller, uh, Scott Winslow, this morning. He said, you know, my traditional infrastructure buyer, he's not the one, they're looking at cloud, and they're talking about it, but it's different buying, it's different parts of the organization. Um, and, you know, I, I just worry that some of these changes are happening, like, at the periphery, and we kind of see it, but, you know, we're not addressing it. Well, it's it has happened at the margin. I mean, Amazon's got some work to do in the enterprise, don't get me wrong, but look at it. $7.3 billion run rate, 80% growth rate, a billion dollar plus storage business. That's notable. Yeah. Right? yeah and, and, and Microsoft actually has more total cloud revenue and is growing at a similar yeah, pace. Yeah, Microsoft's okay. number one in public Guys, cloud. Guys, let's, let's rein that. this in. Okay, let's talk about um, going forward. What, nine months is a long, long ways away for execution of this deal. Let's talk about the impact of the industry. Let's, let's assume things go, go forward. What are the key integration challenges uh, I want you guys to address? And two, what does this do to the industry? Yeah. Two well, questions. Well, I'm going to start with two. There's a big FUD factor going on. If I'm a sales rep at IBM or you know, HP or you know, any other competitor of EMC and Dell, I'm all over them. Their customers saying, whoa, lots of confusion, and how do you know what's going to happen? They're going to you know, pull R&D, I mean, all kinds of you know, FUD in the marketplace, and Dell and EMC are going to have to deal with that. Now, you were saying before we came on that after the 60-day window, they're going to start cross-selling. Because yeah. see, Dell and EMC aren't stupid. They, they winners, right? So they're going to do stuff like that to try to moderate that FUD. Yeah. So, Dave, you're absolutely right. The competition is like, you know, this is our opportunity, you know. They are weak while they're trying to sort this out. And, and I tell you, the technology partners and the channel partners, they're a little worried. And they don't know what's going to happen and there's so many moving pieces. The channel guys, I mean, Dell does a lot direct. You know, EMC has the way that they do things. That mesh will be tough. But you know, you talk to the technology partners. What happens to VCE? What happens to the Nutanix OEM? What happens to everybody from EMC's side that now is like, up? Oh, EMC has a server now. And what happens on the Dell side where they're like, wow, now they're really a strong but storage But history play. shows that EMC capitalizes on those opportunities better than their competitors cap have capitalized on those opportunities. We'll see, it's a new era. But generally speaking, EMC's competitors have done a poor job of, of capitalizing on yeah, chaos. I, I mean, Dave, you, you know how much I followed VCE since the early days, and everybody asks me you know, every week, when's VCE dying, when's VCE dying? Well look, Chuck Robbins and David Goulden put out an email you know, saying that the, the company is strong, and absolutely, there's, you know, they used over $2 billion, but I can tell you, Cisco now looks at it and says, EMC and Dell are going to be together. I don't think it's over the next six or nine months, but is VCE you know, going to go away? It, two years from now, well, is VCE is what it is? Going to go away? Well, right, VBlock stays Cisco, so will VCE start shifting over to VX racks and VX blocks and all of those other yes. things? Yes, <laughs> you know, <laughs> okay. you have to think over time that that does shift, just as you think. You know, a year from now, is the Nutanix OEM as important for Dell? Well, there's probably okay, so other guys, options. Let's talk acquisitions. What does the competition do in response to this? Obviously. Dell and EMC make this big move, they're the big Asian Japan gorilla. As I said to Michael Dell, you got all the nukes, you got all the weaponry. Well, so who are we talking about now? HP, HP? Oracle. But Oracle, look, you got Nikon, you got Nimble Storage HP, Oracle, out there, you IBM. got Pure Storage. What does HP do to respond to this? So HP doesn't. HP has to focus on the split, right? And they got to get their own internal act together. So I don't think they make any moves to respond to it. Same thing with Oracle. I mean, Oracle's got a strategy, and the strategy on paper anyway when the is, is very when clear the fun, and clean. When the FUD is over, and the dust settles. HP has to start acquiring when, companies, companies more aggressively and shift its product when, mix towards software. When you, HP doesn't have enough software in its portfolio. If you, when the FUD is gone, and yeah. the dust is settled, 
and I'm a buyer, and in comes the Dell EMC powerhouse and HP, I got to say, Dell was going to just like, just on pure volume and, uh, and power. Oracle, so I got the Oracle guy. So who's at the table? I'm the buyer. Oracle? AWS? Well, Oracle's a unique animal, right? I mean, Oracle's, what Oracle's doing is living off of database maintenance and pouring money into applications, right? And pouring money into cloud. But Oracle's got this little insulated world. I'm right. building the equivalent okay. of skyscrapers in the IT metaphor. Right, so I got to build up my next generation infrastructure. So that, I'm just Who saying, am I buying that's Oracle. Yeah. Who am and I IBM, buying And IBM is very Oracle-like, right? So that leaves sort of HP and Dell, right. and EMC doing so there, there's, Who am I buying from? You know, who's going to take Citrix off the table? Sounds like things are moving, well, and whether it either gets sold into go, pieces, or somebody you know, buys it. Or they you know, maybe they go, go private. private. Is private the new, the new public? Private's the new black. Off? Private's the new <laughs> well, way. Yeah, is I, it good or bad? A lot of people are saying it's, I mean, it's... Yeah. I, I've talked to a, a couple of big investors here at the show and they're like, God, you don't want to be in the market to IPO a tech company right now. It's, no. just, it's really bad it's right going, now. Going so. private's a good thing. It insulates you from all the, maybe Michael calls it the 90 day shock clock. It's a good thing. It gives you time to invest in your business. Like I said, Wall Street doesn't want to own companies that are in transition. So if you go private like Dell did, you know, Informatica did, BMC did. These are all companies in transition. Well, that's why VMware is getting pounded. BMC's, you know, in transition. That's why VMware might be getting pounded. Confusing story. Where's the chips going to fall? Okay, guys. Well, great day. Michael Dell came on. Just observation keynotes. Michael Dell, what'd you think? I mean, I thought he had a great spring to his step. I mean, I see this guy energized like a young kid. You know, entrepreneurial mindset. You see, this he's got a great vision. He sees the day is, you know, still long for him in this business? Yeah, so, so take? like I said, I mean, from Dell's perspective, I think this is a good deal. A lot of people compare this deal to HP Compaq. I don't see it that way at all. If anything, I see it more like Compaq Digital, the difference being you have a, a strong leader and a much better management team with a vision, and I think in general better IP that could actually make this work. Well, you got two companies. companies without a lot of overlap. I don't even think that's a comparison. I think, well, I from the standpoint you. of not a lot of overlap, that's what I mean. Like, eight, Compaq and HP had a lot of overlap. D you know, Dell and EMC don't have a ton of overlap. Compaq and Digital didn't have a ton of overlap. What they, did, what they didn't have is strong enough management to see it through. Yeah. Dell, EMC, if they can maintain management, if they can deal with the HR challenges, have very, very strong management. That Mares Haas interview was fantastic. He pointed out that, and I kind of baited him on the question where mega mergers work with the founders who are around, and he pointed out, you're right, but also, if the institutional players aren't there to pass on that working knowledge. So the question to me with the EMC deal is, will Michael Dell honor the Egan legacy? To your point, it's an emotional downer for EMCers. I mean, they're not happy. I mean, no one's doing uh, handstands in Hopkinton. I mean, Stu, you, yeah. you work there. So, yeah, the, the thing I heard from Dell people is, you know, Michael gives that calm confidence. He gave, you know, a very solid keynote this morning and exudes, this is, you know, go big or go home, I know what I'm doing, we've looked through it all, and, you know, you know, th this is going to be good for all of us. So and come along. Is, for it, the is it the 495 becomes the R and D belt well, for so, all the West Coast? So no, and you're just going to see Dell logos so on some of those buildings. John. I've seen a lot of mergers oh, oh, in, the, in the day, and my advice to all my friends at EMC is embrace it. It's going to happen. So find the opportunities because they got a lot of smart people there, and if they do that, they're going to they're going to be fine. I know there's a lot of uncertainty right EMC, now. So I think EMC, so depending the how they handle, don't go how away. they handle the, the integration. Who's running the enterprise? He said David Goulden will be running the well, he didn't enterprise. Say that. He didn't say that. Mario said it'll be run out of Hopkinton. So okay. presumably David Goulden. Actually, you're right. Get he, did, he actually didn't say yeah. David Goulden's right. name. But presumably David Goulden. Right, Jeremy will Burton. Stay. What happens to Jeremy yeah, Burton? Yeah, good question. Jeremy Burton is a rock star from a marketing standpoint, but how does he he's fit into the whole He's also president of products. Equation? He's not just yes. a great marketer. Well, yes, and he's a very talented executive. He lives on the West Coast. Well, here's my question. I should have asked this to Michael. Can, can you keep a guy like Jeremy Burton? Not, do, first of all, does he want to? I don't know. Did you know can Jeremy Burton like interviewed Jeremy for the CMO job for Dell? <laughs> I did not know before that. Serrano? That's some trivia that I know. Jeremy Burton can do whatever he wants. That guy's yeah. a superstar of a, of a marketer. He's got yeah. a lot of talent. They would be cool So it's going to be losing. really interesting to see if Dell can maintain that type of talent. I think, I think Jeremy will be a big player in this deal. I think he could run one of the big time divisions on the P&L basis. 
He's got the juice. I'd he's be tapping the, Jeremy if I were Michael. Jeremy's yeah. young, he understands business, and he's a fantastic marketer. He's a great yeah. executive. Yeah. So, so great we're hoping executive. there'll be some more nonstop flights going between Austin and Boston now to make this a little bit easier. <laughs> you know, while Michael Dell probably doesn't need it, uh, they, they were reporting that he just put a uh, deposit down on a house in the Boston area. Uh, but you know, a lot going on. Uh, so much change going to happen between now and next summer. And I mean, Dave, as we said, you know, this is it's 2017 before we really are going to know where things are. So, all right, you know. guys. Well, thanks so much. This is the cube wrap up. A little bit longer than usual. Lots actually, to talk about. Actually, a lot to talk about. In fact, there's so much more we can get to. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff on the transcript on the crowd chat. Go to crowdchat.net slash Dellworld. Go to wikibon.com and some check out the, the analysis. Dave and his team have been doing a great job with the analysis on the EMC merger. Uh, there's also a transcript on the EMC Dell thing called crowdchat.net slash Dell, Dell EMC. Go to siliconangle.com and go to siliconangle.tv for all the replays. And if you want to see all the show content from theCUBE at Dell World, go to crowdpages.co slash Dell World. That's it for now for day one wrap up. This is theCUBE, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. <laughs>